Hi, I'm Ian Thane and we're back for another co-talk, uh, co-talk back in the office. Uh, again, I said not on the road anymore, but I am with me today talking about SAP UI5, somebody I have met on the road a number of times, and that's DJ Adams, Principal Consultant of Bluefin. DJ, thank you for joining me here today on co-talk. Thanks for having me, Ian. So last time we saw each other was at TechEd, and yeah, the time before go. that, you were at YRS, the Young Rewired State that um, the SAP have sponsored. Yes. So uh, I, I'll have to get you back for a talk about YRS because I think that's a really worthy cause and I know you've spent a lot of your own time on that and you, you'd be able to tell me uh, what you get back as a, as a professional developer you know, from giving to the, the wider community of young developers. But what we're here talking about today is SAP UI5. Uh, and I know you've been doing quite a bit of work with that recently. Yes, um, I've been working with the SAP UI5 core team in Waldorf uh, since mid-August, end of August. So it's an amazing privilege for me as a you know an external and outsider to go in and work with the uh, all the heroes that are, are building out this this UI framework. Um, yeah, so I've been there since the end of August. I sort of partially work from home, partially work there in Waldorf. Um, currently home in Manchester, but going back to Waldorf next week. Sunny Manchester, just like sunny Essex at the moment. So yeah. um, give, let's get straight into the subject. What is SAP UI5? Where is it is positioned and where is it being used right now? So SAP UI5, or to give it its official SAP um, long title, which is the um, UI or User Interface Development Toolkit for HTML5, which is exactly the reason why nobody calls it that. Uh, so SAP UI5 is uh, a UI framework. It's a UI framework that is at the heart of SAP's uh, renewal of their UX user experience and their UI strategy, um, not only for Fiori, but for other um, apps as well. Um, I suppose the most significant um, part of the answer to what UI5 is, is that it's a framework that's um, with which you build apps that run in the browser. So it's a framework for building outside-in based applications. Uh, with that, I mean, uh, traditionally, um, people like me, developers like me, have been, uh, for the past few decades, building SAP apps from the inside and pushing them out. So using classic uh, classical DIMPRO techniques or web DIMPRO, or even things like BSPs. So you're actually building all the all the application logic in SAP, but you're also building the UI logic in SAP as well and pushing it out and having that render sort of outside your control. Whereas uh, SAP UI5, like many other um, HTML5 based frameworks out there um, in the open source world, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technology that's based upon HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on. And so the, the actual application runs in the browser and then reaches back into SAP to pull and push data. You mentioned a second ago that uh, it's actually a framework. So what does it actually consist of? What sort of uh, controls and stuff do we get? Well, I mean, so as, as a framework, there's, you know, with, with many things like this, there's there's a design time and there's a run time. So, um, you know, if you take the design time first, you, you get uh, wizards, you get plugins, you get, you get uh, lumps of stuff that you can uh, install into your Eclipse environment if you're, that, you know, so inclined that you use Eclipse, for example. Um, you know, command completion and all that sort of stuff, if you like that sort of thing. Um, and as well, from a design time perspective, there's things like the App Builder, which, which allow you to um, rapidly prototype and build um, UIs. Uh, from a runtime perspective, um, it's a whole load of JavaScript code, basically. And uh, it's divided, you know, I see it as divided up into a number of libraries. Those libraries uh, are the things that contain what you just said before, which are the controls. So um, one library that I'm working with very heavily at the moment, which I'll start with first then, uh, is the sap.m for, for mobile library. Um, so I'm in the sap.m team at the moment uh, in Valdorf. And uh, the sap.m library within the UI5 framework uh, provides a number of controls that uh, are used to build mobile-based applications. But it's not just mobile anymore. It's, it's about responsive design. So all the Fiori apps. Um, wave one, wave two, etc. They're all built predominantly with the controls that are in the SAP 
Docm library. Um, controls like the app, the split app, the icon tab bar, the search field, lists, tables, buttons, texts, all that sort of stuff. So that's the sort of uh, granularity we're, we're talking about. But there are other um, libraries as well, sap.ui.commons, sap.ui.layout, and so on. Um, so, so people have been who have been working with UI5 already, uh, building sort of desktop apps, they'll be familiar with the sap.ui. asterisk uh, libraries. So it's it's a it's a combination of design time and, and runtime, really. So what's what does uh, a UI5 app look like? Um, okay, well, from a from a visual perspective, I think one of the things that most people will be aware of or may have seen, for example, in the Tega keynotes, you mentioned Tega before. So all the, or pretty much all the um, demos and screenshots that were shown on the keynotes uh, at TechEd, at least in Amsterdam, where I was and you were, um, are built with UI5. So it's, uh, there's, a, there's a certain look and feel about them. Uh, with the responsive design, there's a certain look and feel that changes across uh, different device uh, types, going from desktop to tablet to smartphone, as you get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so there's the responsive design. You can also theme. You know, you start out with, for example, the blue crystal theme or the gold reflection, gold reflection theme. Um, but there's a, a theme editor uh, with which you can then customize your themes, bring in logos, change the colors, and so on, all sorts of things. So um, you know, an SAP UI5 app um, can look very different from, from one particular application to the next. Uh, it really all depends on you know how you use a the theming, how you use a custom CSS, for example. Um, but even uh, you know even if you don't, if you're not a, a UI designer or UX expert, I'm not a UX expert. I'm not a UI person really. But I I can build fairly nice looking UI five apps just by using the standard controls and letting the authors of those controls, you know, the, the heroes in the SAP UI five teams. Um, handle that stuff with the CSS and the actual rendering mechanisms that they built for those controls. Okay, so that's the visual side, but as a developer, what are the m main features that you get with SAP UI5? Okay, uh, well, there, there, are, there are tons of features, clearly, but I mean, I suppose some of the significant features significant for me as a developer, um, you've got the, the automatic module loading system. So it's a really nice way of loading modules on demand, pointing uh, the UI5 core framework to, you know, all my modules in this namespace are over there, so it'll automatically load those. It'll load, you know, you, you, can, you can very easily um, have your UI5 app load, for example, views or pages on demand, so you don't have to preload everything. So if, you're, if your application flow goes in a certain direction and not in another direction, you haven't already loaded a, stuff, a whole load of stuff that you, you know, resources that you're not going to use. Um, possibly even more significantly as, a, as a, a component or as a part of UI5 for a developer is the whole um, uh, data model mechanism. So there's a really, really nicely designed and built data model which allows you as a, a developer using UI5 to uh, interact with backend systems and you know data resources across the web, uh, arbitrary XML, arbitrary JSON, and most significantly for us as SAP developers, with the way that um, gateway OData is going, you can handle OData as well. And obviously, this is not just read only; this is read write. So, um, with all those with all those different um, uh, backend types, and especially with OData, you have the full uh, set of operations: create, read, update, and delete. Okay, so you mentioned the, the magic word OData. Uh, tell me more about OData and SAP UI5. Um, well, es essentially, one of the really nice things is that you can point uh, your UI5 application at a, an OData service. So an OData service, or when you say point, point at an OData service, what you do, what you're talking about really is, is the service URL. So that service URL is the sort of start point for all the different um, aspects of that particular data service. So it has the, the metadata information, and you also have the, the collections. So for example, a product collection, supplier collection, sales order, item collection, and so on. And um, you can actually, for example, uh, interchange um, 
a, an OData model definition with a JSON model or vice versa, and your application, if you've written it properly, will continue to work. Um, so there's automatic binding between the, the, the parts of your uh, visual controls, for example, and the data model. So there's a, there's a, there's a binding. The binding can be two-way, it can be one-way. Um, it's, a, it's a really nicely thought out um, model view uh, relationship that uh, the SAP UI5 has got. And in fact, that, you know, clearly that, that sort of suggests and it's, it's true that um, SAP UI5 does support MVC in a, in a really nice way. So you've got, you've got the, the model part, OData, JSON, XML. But then you've got the views as well, um, and you know you can build your views in, in many different ways. You know XML, JSON, JavaScript, and HTML. Cool. So, okay. That's another example. Yeah. As um, you mentioned, I want to go back to the start of our conversation where you mentioned Fiori. How does that the UI five relate to that? Um, okay. So this is actually one of the the, the, the trickier questions, um, which makes it all the more interesting. Um, you know what it is? Must, it must be tricky because you're just taking a big gulp of water. So yeah. Yeah, it's like taking a deep breath. Deep breath. No. Um, to be honest, you know what is Fiori? I think there are maybe for every for every developer, there's a slightly different definition of what Fiori is. Um, you know, if you look at some of the early material from SAP, the early public material from SAP, Fiori was very very clearly uh, defined as um, the the context of the renew. Uh, UI, the UI renewal. So let's take all the uh, the most common, um, commonly used uh, applications. The sort of the this part of the of the, long, the the start of the long tail or before the long tail, and re rethink those from a UX perspective. And that's what they used Fiori for. And in the same breath, they were talking about uh, SAP screen personas, for example, for um, tweaking and making uh, more pleasant the the long tail. Of applications within SAP, but Fiori is more than that. Fiori um, has become um, an idea. It's, be, it's almost become a religion. Uh, it's become a bandwagon as well for, you know, in my in my personal opinion, for uh, potentially for for some for some groups of people to say, that, you know, let's, let's let's stamp what we're doing with Fiori, and you know, we'll get closer to the customers. Um, I'm 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 sure that that will uh, fade away as uh, education uh, cuts through that and and shows us and shows the customers the distinction between UI5 and Fiori. But essentially, I mean, this is, this is a very long answer to a simple question, but essentially Fiori is um, the combination of uh, UX thinking. It's a com combination of simplification. It's the combination of using certain um, responsive controls in the SAP.M library. Um, it's a little bit of look and feel, but of course you'd be like, you, know, you want to be able to theme that stuff as well. Um, it's also things like, well, um, for any given application, you know, it's a one role, one user, maximum of three screens type thing, the 113 design. So it's all these things and more, really. I mean, you know, we, could, we could spend all day de debating and going back and forth on what Fiori might be, but those are some of the, uh, you know, some of the tasters of, you know, what people are thinking Fiori is. Okay, you've got to learn to walk before you some, to run. So let's talk a techie question, but let's take it at the real basic. So what is a basic uh, UI5 app look like? What is it, you know, technically, how does it hang together? Okay, um, so essentially, if we take a step back for a second, you know, um, it's it's a UI toolkit for HTML5. So that gives us a clue that it's a web app. So a web app is going to be served from a web server, and traditionally, not necessarily, but traditionally, um, the first, you know, the first thing that gets sent down the wire um, when you request uh, a web app from a web server is an index page, index.html, and that's traditionally the name of the, of the file that, uh, that starts everything off. So you download, or your, your browser will download index.html, and within that file, you have what's called the SAP UI5 bootstrap, which bootstraps, loads, um, the core framework, the core UI5 framework is JavaScript. It's a minified JavaScript, and along with that bootstrap, loading of the core framework. You have a number of parameters you can specify, maybe what theme you might want. There are some standard themes. You might have created your own theme um, and other bits and pieces as well. For example, um, what libraries you'll be using. Once you've done that, then of course you have um, the, the runtime at your disposal. And what would normally happen is that you'll 
instantiate, bring to life a control. Let's, you know, the simplest possible, the thing, you know, the simplest possible case would be maybe, you know, a button with some text on it. So you, inst you instantiate a button control. When in that instantiation, you'd have um, a property uh, to say what the text would be on the button. And then you say, okay, well, I want to place this control in this particular element on my page, in the body, in my HTML body. And that's it. So, and, and, and everything after everything flows after that. that you know, that's the, the simplest thing that could possibly work. That's a, obviously a really, really simple example. But really, when you look at the, the more complex uh, applications and you look at the Fury applications, they all start in the same way.